But anyway, um, welcome to WMC. My name is Glenn Conte. Um, I've been a professional designer for about six years. I worked at Hot Cars for about five. Um, I started at Hot Cars in 2007. Um, now recently, 2010, I opened up my own building, my own design studio across the street. Um, it's called Out of the Hype, other known as Ilky, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I've designed for a lot of people, um, a lot of people in the industry, some athletes, some, some rappers, like Kid Cudi, I designed for LeBron James, Wale, was Um my big, just to name a few. Um, I was able to get these clients, um, which is crazy because I didn't graduate college. I don't think I was like a born bred designer. I was always good at drawing, but I was never like in the design world until I was like 25. That's when I started with like, uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. But um, I wasn't really a good student either. Uh, I was always sleeping in class or getting in trouble in school. And, and, and uh, all I do is like draw on my books. I draw like Ninja Turtle headbands on like. <laughs> I'm like George Washington and stuff like that. <laughs> and all these kids, like, 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 when they look at my books, they're like, oh man, that's so cool. And um, I started sharing with everybody else. And then the teachers got a hold of that, that um, I was not paying attention and seeing all the sketches and stuff like that. And I thought I was going to get in trouble. But um, they actually um, encouraged me to draw more. They're like, hey, this is actually pretty cool, even though, like, Abraham Lincoln told him a samurai sword. <laughs> <laughs> Chopping somebody's head off. Well, that's kind of what I like to do. Um, so, like, the teachers helped me get through um, the school through art. They, like, enrolled me to, like, weekend classes. And they went to the art. I think it was. They did, like, classes for kids to do art and stuff. So, like, little pottery and all those kind of different things when I was young. But like I said, I wasn't good at school. Same thing in high school. Um, I wasn't good in high school. I barely graduated high school. Um, because all I wanted to do was, you know, not pay attention to class and draw my books and stuff like that. That's the only thing I've ever done. <clears throat> and I wasn't even supposed to graduate. I was like two credits short from graduating until like, like my, I didn't know that I was gonna graduate until like the last week. And one of my teachers, called me in his office. He's like, when? You know that you're not going to graduate because you're failing my class? I was like, damn. <laughs> what do I do now? Like, how do I get these two credits? So he like, sat me down. He's like, Glenn, I know that you're good at art. If you promise to do art after you're out of high school and get a career in art, I'll let you pass this class. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so he gave me three credits and um, ended up going to college. <clears throat> the, the second thing part was um, I wasn't good at school, so I wasn't like qualified for any scholarships. So I had to go to like Tri C, which, um, you know, nobody respects Tri C at all. They even call it like Tri High, you know, like really crappy schools. But Tri C's not that bad, you know. They, uh, the teachers are pretty good, but the only thing they probably lack is some inspirational like, tech students. Like everybody that went to Tri C wasn't really that good. So like when I go in there and I do my art, they're like, oh man, like how the hell did you make that? <laughs> and um, every time I look at their art, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> So like I took like regular like I, I uh, majored in illustration. Um, at the time I didn't think I could get a job just drawing because like who makes money drawing people or stuff like that? I couldn't get a job drawing people. <coughs> so like my focus started to wear away. You know, I take like new figure drawing classes and stuff like that, drawing like fat women and stuff like that, and just 
my hood, like, do I really want to do this every day? It started to affect, like, my other classes. So I started not paying attention to the class again, and drawing my textbooks again. And the, the teacher actually saw me, like, not paying attention. So I got in trouble again. And um, he pulled me in, he was like, like, Glenn, if you don't pay attention to my class, you're just wasting your time. You should just quit my class, find something else. So when he said that, I was like, damn, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I'm not ready to do art. So maybe I'll just find a job, try to make some money, and, and wait till college, till later. So I took a nice little break from college. <laughs> and uh, I had to find a job. And being a college kid or an ex-college kid, you know, you don't have a, you know, anything to back you up to get a good job. I had to get some shitty jobs. One of my first jobs was Burger King. And, um, you know, pretty, pretty sure a lot of people work there, like fast food here, of course. Real crappy job. You don't want, you know, you don't take it seriously. You're kind of in there just making your burgers, you're making your french fries or whatever. And I'm, you know, the same as Glenn, unfocused in there. Like, every time somebody would order some chicken nuggets, I would eat some chicken nuggets, too. <laughs> so, like, someone would order a 20-piece, I'd give it to them, like, hey, man, I ordered a 20-piece, not a 17-piece. <laughs> I got in trouble again. The manager was like, hey, man, you got to stop eating up food. <laughs>
and if you know, Asian, older, older Asian guys, they're usually working in a factory or you're working in, at the hospital or whatever. You know, that's what they do. And I was just looking around and I see all these older people, like 50, 60 years old, working at this factory. The job wasn't that hard though. Like, it was just a factory full of tools, of drill bits, hammers, all this stuff. And all I had to do was like, gather an order and ship it out. People will order tools, I just ship them out. But I didn't want that life. I didn't want to be stuck there, 50, 60 years old, finding hammers for people and stuff. So that's when I realized, like, damn, man, like, I need to go back to school. <coughs> the only thing I'm good at is drawing, so I need to, I have to try to find a job doing art. Someone went back, actually took school a little bit more serious. I was pretty good at school that time. I learned how to do uh, Adobe Illustrator, you know, Photoshop. I was pretty good at Illustrator uh, pretty quickly. Started making uh, portraits for people, stuff like that, just for money and stuff, like for my friends. And at that time, MySpace was like the shit. Everybody was on MySpace and I draw. My top eight was like all vector portraits of like people and stuff like that. So like all my like friends I'm real cool with had their own vector portrait. And um, some promoters and stuff started taking notice. And they were like, hey man, like this is some pretty cool stuff. Like, I think I want to use you to start making like flyers for us. I'm like, cool. I can finally start making money doing some art instead of like this little bullshit. And um, it was a, a flyer for, um, I think, Club Moda. And at that time, like, I'd always put my phone number on all my flyers. So I made sure that, you know, if someone liked the art, hit me up and I, you know, I can make some art for you too. So I get a phone call one day from um, hotcars.com, their local printing company over downtown. And they saw like my flyers that I've been doing. And uh, the boss over there, his name is Columbus Woodrow. He said, um, everybody's flyers have been so crappy until I like seen yours. Then when I saw the 216 number on that flyer, designed by Glenn Fonte, 216, blah, blah, blah. Like I had to call you. Like I want to offer you an internship here to work. I was like, sweet. Like the actual job that I wanted, you know? Um, so I, I worked there for, a, for as an intern for a few months until they offered me like, a full-time position. At the time I was still in college and I had to choose between finishing college or doing graphic design full time. I figured that I didn't need college now because the job is already there. That's why I'm going to college for, for that graphic design job. So I ended up taking the job, plus I had a baby on the way, so I kind of needed to take the job. Um, then, uh, you know, Hot Cards is great though. Like, I love working there, the people working there is great. Um, the boss, you know, probably the best boss I ever had. He, um, he wasn't more of a boss. Um, he was more like a friend that you didn't want to disappoint. So like, when you have a boss like that, you know, it kind of makes your job a little bit easier, so I kind of try to like take on those traits too, if I ever like decide to do something on my own or whatever. So I was working there for a few years. You know, everything's great. Popularity started to jump through. You know, the stuff that I've been making. Clients have been coming fast. <coughs> it started to get old. I was tired of making flyers for nightclubs and business cards for like startup companies and stuff like that. Like I needed something new to do, but I was stuck. Just, this was my career. Like this was my job. So I figured I just stay there. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to be until they bought the t-shirt printing equipment. So when he brought in the t-shirt printing equipment, he was showing it off. This shirt right there, one of the shirts that we made. Um, <clears throat> said, yeah, man, like this is called Die Sublimation. All you gotta do is print these, print 
print your graphics on a piece of paper and you heat press it on the shirt, you get the most beautiful shirts you could ever make. And we tried, I tried some, you know, printing for some clients and stuff like that. And you know, they came out pretty good. And at the time, you know, I wanted to make some extra money. So I was like, hmm, how can we, maybe I can uh, try to make some extra money off this thing and uh, make my own stuff. And in 2009, the cabs were like, they were like, you know, the shit at that time. You know, we had LeBron James, we had Eric Snow, <laughs> more, more importantly, Delonte West. Um, and everybody loved Delonte West, you know, like, he was like almost as popular as LeBron at that time. Mainly because of his like antics outside of playing basketball. Like he would eat fried chicken outside in rap, outside of KFC, and everybody loved it. And, and there was another segment where um, he got mad at JJ Hickson for not giving him his donuts. So I decided, to, hey, like, yeah, I'll make a Delonte shirt. Everybody loves Delonte. Um, that should be an easy sell, especially since I was running a website at that time called realcastmax.com. And um, so I did my usual vector portrait of Delante eating a donut with a tagline that says, you better have my donuts. And, you know, it was just fun, really. And I was only going to make a few shirts just for um, real cast fans. And I showed them the shirt, and they they all got like ape shit for it. They're like, oh my god, I need one. Like, Please print them. So I was okay. There was only a few people that wanted them, so I only made 12. So <clears throat> I put in my order for 12 shirts, and um, I get a call one day, and I pick up the phone, and it's one of my boys, and they're like, "Dude, did you know that Cleveland Scene just blogged about your shirt?" I'm like, "For real? That's pretty cool." And I can sell out these 12 shirts, you know. <laughs> that may happen. Um, so, you know, I offered the shirt to the guy who the scene too, so I only had 11 left. I didn't even have the shirts at this time. So the next day comes around, my phone rings again, same dude. He's like, dude, Yahoo Sports just blogged about your, your t-shirt design. Like, everybody wants that shit right now. I'm like, what? <laughs> Y'all in sports, for real? Everybody's gonna be pissed that I only made 12. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I was like, okay, I'll just make these 12 and sell them, whatever. And the next day, my phone rings again. He's like, dude, <laughs> Jim Rowe is talking about your shirt on TV, on ESPN. I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> So I was like, dude, how do you feel about that, man? Like, everybody wants your shirt. I was like, man, I love it. I love the hype. That's the thing, exactly what I said. Like, I love the hype. I said, let's do it. Let's make a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we made a hundred shirts, but we didn't even know. I didn't have the money at that time, so I had to wait until I sold these 12 shirts to get some money to, to make the shirts. But the next day comes around and I get another phone call and it's not that guy, dude guy, but it's this other guy who said he got his number, got my number from somebody who could even see is a representative from Delante. And he, he's like, Delante loves your shirts. He loves what you did. Can we please have a few shirts? And I can't say no, you know? I only had 12, but hey man, take uh, couple, I guess, you know, I gave him three. So, so now I'm down to like what, like nine or eight shirts? <laughs> and I have to like sell to try to make money to make a hundred? <laughs> How am I gonna do this? So, um, I waited, I still didn't have the shirts in my hands yet. The next day, I finally get the shirts. You know, I get 12 of them. I ship out Delonte shirts. I ship out Cleveland Scene shirt. Then I get a phone call again, and it's the same dude that called me about Delante. He's like, yo, Jim Rome wants some shirts. 
I'm like, what? Like, how many? It's like, like four. It's like, damn, dude, then I'm gonna have like three shirts to sell on the website. It's like, well, man, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for us, you'd have no shirt to make for anybody to want. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. So I had to give him the shirts, and I had three shirts. So what I had to do is I had to pre-sell the shirts this time to make the money. So I started a website called I Love the Hype. That's how I was feeling at that time. I loved the hype that was going on about that shirt. And it was just a, the image of the shirt with a PayPal button. That was it. <laughs> it said, pre-order your shirt now. And I only put 100 on there. Because that's how many I think of it. So I wake up the next day, and they're all gone. They're all sold out, all 100. Like, they sold out in you know, less than 24 hours. So I used that money, you know, to, to print those hundred shirts. So where am I at right now? So with that money, you know, I had some, uh, you know, had some play money. I had, you know, I had a chance to to do something else with this than make some Delonte shirts. Like, uh, other than those purchases were other emails and stuff saying, man, man, you should start making other stuff, man. You should start selling, put your art on t-shirts and, and start selling those. I'm like, man, man, good idea. So, like, we, we decided that, that we needed to change the name of the website since it was going to be a brand name. And we, I didn't want to change it to what it already was and somebody can't even find it. Like, someone's going to look for out of the hype. You won't be able to find it anymore because we changed the name of the, of the brand. So, so what we're going to do is just abbreviate, abbreviating it, calling it Ilthi. So, if you look at Ilthi, it's just abbreviation of out of the light. And um, that's pretty much how it, um, the branding started with, um, you know, through the latte and everything like that. And that we're more focused on selling shirts that just say Ilthi. And those who, who pay attention, from the beginning, appreciate that name more than the people who are hip to ill through now. Um, so if I, like, there's a moral to this story, pretty much. Um, like, if I were to give anybody some advice on selling shirts, is to keep your quantity, quantities low and build a demand, because that's what we, that's what I did, you know. Um, I only had 12 shirts, but you know, not everybody could have them, so that's why they all wanted them. They, they wanted it, they wanted it, but they can't have it. So, for those of you who are trying to build a brand or trying to sell a product, it's, it's safer to make something small than making a whole bunch and then it just fails and you're left over with all these weird t-shirts that you made that you thought people would want. Um, also, um, throughout my, like, my career, I realized that, um, you know, I gave up on school, I gave up on a lot of jobs, but I realized at the end, in order for me to be successful, is just to keep doing what I'm good at, which is, you know, art. So, as long as you keep making stuff, when you keep creating things, somebody's going to, you know, pay attention. Someone's going to find and see what you're making. As long as you're good at it and you, and you continue to make it, people, you know, will take notice. So, just keep making it, you know, keep making anything. Keep, just make it till you make it, pretty much. You know, and that's it. Um, that's pretty much all I have, so if, um, if anybody wants to ask me a question,